Welcome back. Time for our Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, let's talk about a couple of different issues that have come up, uh, coming up in the legislature. This past week, Governor Fallon hosted a press conference and rolled out her anti-tobacco, uh, anti-smoking initiative. Tell us a little bit about that. It was a very interesting event, a uh, sequence of events. One day, uh, Senate committee um, uh, defeated by a 62 margin, and it was bipartisan, by the mm -hmm. way. There was uh, people on both sides from both parties, uh, but defeated 62 a proposal to allow local communities to go beyond the state's regulation of tobacco and smoking. The outcome wasn't particularly surprising. Uh, the margin was uh, a kind of a surprise. Well, the governor turned around the very next day, as you all have and others have covered, and had a press conference. Uh, to announce they're going to go into the field with an initiative. Now, a ballot initiative. Right. What, here's what's interesting about that. Will it simply be crafted, and we don't know the answer to this yet, will it be crafted in such a way as to simply replace the legislation that was killed in the Senate and allow local regulation? Or will it pull to the state level uh, additional regulation of tobacco beyond what already exists? Um, that's what's going to be interesting is to see how far Fallon goes uh, and her allies go because there was a lot of people in the room with her that I, I think would like to shut down uh, the tobacco industry. Uh, I'm not sure that's the governor's position, mm -hmm. uh, but now we'll know uh, maybe clearer her point of view when we see uh, the actual words of this ballot measure. Well, I know that she's frustrated, a lot of frustrated in the, the health side because Oklahoma is one of just two states in the country where municipalities cities, towns cannot write uh, smoking legislation any tougher than the states. Yeah, that's an interesting issue of local preemption. At the same time, you've got 50 states and the template for tobacco regulation is slightly different in all 50 states. That's uh, what's interesting to me. And so the fact that we're one of the two is just part of a mosaic where the level of regulation varies dramatically all over the country uh, when it comes to this issue. So watch for, will they go for a statute, a simple mm -hmm. law, which requires fewer signatures, or will they go for a constitutional amendment? And then that level of preemption, if you will, that they pull up to the state or push back down to the communities, I don't know what the answer will be. The governor will tell us eventually. All right, let's talk workers' comp. On Monday, uh, the president pro tem of the Senate, Brian Bingman, introduced his workers' comp reform bill. Talk about that. How would it change the workers' comp system in Oklahoma? Well, it would change from a uh, judicial system, a lit litigious-oriented system, if you will, with aspects of administrative regulation. It would change from that to a, an administrative system. It has a strong case can be made for it because of the comparatively high costs of workers' compensation insurance in Oklahoma. Uh, there are contrary arguments, the state chambers for it, uh, and many of the conservatives in the legislature, including uh, Senator Bingman, but contrary arguments are being made, uh, labor unions, um, some of the Democratic legislators, and a few Republicans uh, who are concerned uh, for pragmatic reasons. And those pragmatic reasons are, uh, so far, we already have two systems. We have the pre-2011 system, and then we have a set of reforms implemented uh, to look at medical procedures and some standardization in practice, if you will, in response to injuries that only went into effect in March 2012. So you have pre-2011, and then since 2011 with that system laid on top of it. And so you have at least two systems already. Right. Bob Burke makes the point um, uh, who's a you know prominent uh, workers' comp lawyer and a respected author here in Oklahoma City, he makes the point that we have the potential that we're going to have three systems competing with each other for some years to come if this measure is passed. Well, I know you'll, you'll continue to follow this. Let's talk real quickly about something that's a highlight every year for the political, for the thespian culture in Oklahoma City, and that is... Uh, 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 the gridiron. So gridiron. Gridiron. Okay. God, there's, there's my it's, pin. That's all right. Pin. Now look, uh, here's the t name of the show. The name of the show is More Obama Drama <laughs> or Oklahoma is Well Read, and the red is R-E-D. Uh, this show is a broad parody by us, by the profession. Journalists wrote the script uh, poking fun 
at the last year in politics. You got to go to TicketStorm or to OKCGridiron.org to get your tickets. All the money we net from this amusing program goes to benefit to college scholarships for uh, Oklahoma students. Um, I play both Joe Biden and Rick Santorum. I hope that many of you will come see us at the Lyric on the Plaza. End of advertisement. Thanks. Break a leg. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You can read more about these topics at capitalbeatok.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.